After swearing a record eight new members, the Baltimore City Council didn't waste any time. This resolution is adopted. The City Council passed a resolution condemning Donald Trump's bigotry. Trump routinely made wrong-headed statements about African Americans in the U.S. Here in Maryland, he referred to youths in Baltimore as having, quote, no spirit. The resolution comes just before the president-elect's visit to Baltimore Saturday to attend the annual Army-Navy football game at M&T Bank Stadium. The Real News will be live streaming the protest organized against Trump's visit beginning at 11 a.m. Newly sworn in third district council person Ryan Dorsey spoke out in favor of the measure. One of the, I think, most important words in this resolution is the term scapegoat. And, and, and I want to stand here today to, to affirm that I'm proud to stand with members of the Baltimore City Council in this term uh, as progressives and, 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 and individuals and a body willing to move policy in the right direction. That, that the hardships we face as a country are not based on minority groups, but based on policies that we can move <coughs> forward to improve the quality of life for Baltimore City, Maryland, and the United States. And we are a body of leaders in this room, and I'm proud to be here today. But the move just came days after newly sworn in Mayor Catherine Pugh said she would work with the Trump administration. Because when he talks about infrastructure needs of an urban environment, I say, that's how it's yes. When he talks about creating jobs and opportunities, I say, that's our city. Yes. We questioned Bill co-sponsor District 8 Councilperson Chris Burnett about criticism over the measure, saying it could undercut Pew's attempt to work um, with Trump. Well, I think it's unfortunate. I mean, you know, no one is above critique. If you say you're about improving urban centers, if you say you like to build things and you ran on, you know, an infrastructure candidate, um, then put your money where your mouth is and, and, and help build our cities out. And, um, and so I, I think that critique is, is a little bit unfair. I mean, you know, just because we're not okay with divisive racist rhetoric doesn't mean that you don't invest in a city like Baltimore that certainly needs it. Um, I think we can, we can do both. We reached out to the mayor's spokesperson who says she does not support the council resolution and reiterated her plan to ask Trump for federal assistance. We asked Burnett to elaborate on why he supports the measure. Well, I co-sponsored the, the resolution uh, in support of what, what was, you know, proposed, which was, you know, there was a lot of divisive rhetoric uh, during the campaign trail um, by the Trump campaign, you know, as it related to people of color, women, the LGBTQ community, uh, Muslims. I mean, pretty much it, it, the floor kept getting lower and lower and, you know, who was next, who was going to be, you know, something terrible said about them or their culture. Um, and that's just not presidential. Uh, it's not what this country is supposed to be about. Um, and especially, you know, as an, an organizer and an activist, um, for me, it was very troubling to see not only his election, but also just, you know, what went on and what we will likely continue um, over the next four years. Um, so it was important for us as a council um, to set, set a tone that, you know, this is not something that represents us and our values. Um, and, you know, it was important, you know, when he's coming to town this weekend to know that, you know, this is not something that that's okay here. Uh, and we don't support that. And as a legislative body, it's important that we, you know, make it clear to the people that got us elected that this is not okay. And we're not going to stand on the sidelines um, while, you know, things are, th are just tossed around um, about the people that we frankly represent here in Baltimore. We have a lot of really diverse communities um, and a lot of people who, you know, were deeply offended and, and hurt and especially children. I mean, some of the, the, the stories I heard were from teachers and, you know, after the election, kids coming in crying and having to have social workers on hand to uh, speak to the young people because they were just so distraught. Um, immigrant children concerned about being their families being deported, um, and it's in a lot of you know bullying and, and, and rhetoric that was shared on the campaign being been said by other children. You know, and so it's it, and it, it, they're devastated. You know, um, especially for young people who've only known Obama. You know, if a, an eight-year-old that's that, that's what they know, and to see something like this is very shocking. It was shocking to all of us, and it was important that we sent that message. And yeah. So it's oh. Russia against the lens. So okay. Yeah. And so it's more than just rhetoric, right? Because what you're saying, like his, his words have empowered white nationalists, they've empowered racists, there's been thousands of instances of harassment around the country and hate crimes. So it's more than, it's really than more than just rhetoric when he's appointing people like Steve Bannon and, um, you know, the, his uh, choice for labor secretary is a, a millionaire fast food CEO who's against raising the minimum wage. Sure. Yeah, I mean, look, these, these things, um, 
you know, a dog whistle politics. I mean, you know, you, you say one thing and, and it, it triggers. And, and I think folks, like you said, white nationalists do feel empowered now. And we've seen an uptick in, in violence toward people of color, towards Muslims, towards the LGBT community since this election. Uh, and I think that's something that, I, you know, I'm fearful of, but I believe it will continue. Um, because I think what you hit on is very important that this rhetoric will translate into policy. Uh, and so when we talk about the impact that, you know, um, putting in a Ben Carson, for example, to run housing department, what that may mean for people who live in public housing and affordable housing when um, he, you know, he said on the Cam Trin Trail that, you know, that's an area that he would cut if he was elected. So now he has the opportunity to actually do that. And um, when we talk about, um, you know, what that means for a low income family who struggles with, you know, stable housing and, and the homeless community that's trying to get into housing, I mean, this can have a devastating impact on our city, especially a city like Baltimore, where, where there's uh, thousands of homeless people every night um, that we know about. And then, you know, young kids who are, you know, couch surfing and, and just trying to make in, you know, one, one, trying to figure out where they're going to sleep at next. Um, and so this will certainly be something that, you know, as us as a council, um, will have to be mindful of. And I mean, it's going to impact us as legislators and how we, you know, said it's changed our agenda a little bit. There are some things that um, we're going to have to move to the forefront now to protect our communities um, so that, you know, we don't really feel the brunt here in Baltimore. But I think we're all going to have to tighten our belts because at the end of the day, you know, there, these, these things will translate into to real life policy changes, real life harm to people. Um, and so that was also why it was important for us is to say, look, we, we, we're condemning this, but this is not OK. For our full interview, with newly sworn in District 8 Councilperson Chris Burnett, go to therealnews.com. This is Jessel Noor in Baltimore.